Story 1, Ms. Nice Girl has left the building. TLDR my boss tried to mess with my money, income taxes, so I sicked the IRS on him and put him out of business. First, I need to explain something. I seem like a very nice, laid-back, easygoing person, so most people make the mistake of thinking I'm a spineless wimp they can take advantage of. Operative word there is seem. In point of fact, I have a vicious, vindictive temper, I'm just emotionally lazy, I don't like wasting time and energy on confrontation that can more profitably be spent elsewhere. However, if you mess with my family or my money, very bad things will happen to you. As my mom liked to say, Ms. Nice Fancy has left the building and you don't want to meet the other fancy. Example follows. This happened about 20 years ago. I started working as a CAD drafter for a small drafting and design firm, practically fresh out of college. I made a good salary, not great but comfortable. Very soon, I found myself the drafter, receptionist, office manager, file clerk, and even janitor when I needed to pick up a little extra money. My boss was almost never in the office, because I was there to handle everything. After a year of being general factotum, on Friday, April 13, my boss comes to me and tells me he doesn't have my income tax paperwork ready but has a reasonable excuse, and he asks me to file an extension. I told him, this is kinda last minute, don't you think? But okay, I'll do it, and I did. Every couple of weeks afterward, I'd ask him about my tax paperwork, and he'd tell me no not yet and umpteen excuses why not. Finally, he told me his lawyer had them and was finishing preparing them, and would be ready any day. Really? I did wonder why his lawyer was working on them instead of his accountant, but I didn't say anything. My tax extension would be up on Sunday July 15th, so I had to turn my taxes in by Saturday July 14th. On Friday July 13th about 5 p.m., I was sitting in my office chatting with my mom, who was there to give me a ride home. My boss came into my office and had the gall to ask me to file another tax extension, and gave me some totally bogus excuse. You see, what he didn't know was, I had found all my tax paperwork on his computer a few weeks before, just needed to be printed out and signed off. So I knew then he'd been lying his at dollar dollar off this whole time. I remember staring at him for a few moments, absolutely dumbfounded, then smiling and saying okay. My mom told me afterward, when she saw me smile at him like that, she thought, oh t, fancy's gonna kill this guy and I don't know if I can stop her. I'm sure he wishes that all I had done to him. First thing Monday morning, I walked straight up to my boss and dropped my resignation on his desk. He's like WTH and tried to argue. Me, I don't argue, I just told him, I'm leaving, do you want me to work my notice? He said, hell no, get your stuff and get out, which was another huge mistake, in a long line of them. Because I left and went straight to the IRS office, where I gave up all the goods on this guy. He apparently never actually paid any of my taxes or his, though he did take it out of my pay and I had proof. It so happens, before he was a CAD drafter slash designer, he was a CPA who left that field under a cloud. The IRS was not happy to hear his name again. Everybody knows, you do not mess with the IRS. Not content with that, I then contacted all of his business associates and told them what he had done, that he was being investigated by the IRS, and if they didn't want to be too they might want to steer clear. I didn't tell his wife, whom I was on very good terms with, but only because I wanted him to have that pleasure. Just picture that conversation, OMG why did she leave? She did everything. Um, well. I'm very sure she heard ALLL about it from his associates. I will give him this, he was stubborn, he managed to hang on to his business for about a year of living hell before going under. But I smirked every time I went by his empty office. Edit, to clarify, I never printed the tax paperwork from his computer, it honestly never occurred to me to do so. I used my own records of what I was paid and what tax was taken out of my salary to go to the IRS with. Since it was all in his handwriting, they accepted it. I was really just trying to give this guy the chance to do the right thing right up to the end. Or hang himself, whichever. Story 2, 
ex and boyfriend hurt my daughter tarnish my friend's reputation and I seek revenge. To start off this is a throwaway as I don't want it to tie back to me. Also buckle up this is going to be a long ride, these events took place over several years, I hope it is worth the read. I am going to begin with the main players, me, my ex-wife Pepper, revenge target number one, her boyfriend Steve, revenge target number two, the boyfriend's ex-wife Maria, co-partner in the revenge, my daughter Sarah, and my friend Jason, accomplice in the revenge. With that set let's get some backstory out of the way. So, Pepper and I had a very up and down marriage. It was one of those that I was madly in love with her, but looking back I think she was in it more for the money and convenience. She had one son we will call drug, because he was and still is a major drug addict, before we got married and I also had one son, name is unimportant, that I had full custody off. While married we had Sarah. I toughed the marriage out for as long as I could but eventually, we just couldn't keep it together. We separated and due to traveling some for work and having custody of my son I moved back to my hometown a few states away so my parents could help but kept an apartment in the town that Pepper and Sarah lived in so that I could still spend as much time with my daughter as I could. At this time, I asked my best friend Jason who is a lawyer and owns his own firm to do up a child support agreement for us. It is very important to note that we only addressed child support it had nothing about custody or visitation or anything else in it. So, for about a year this was how it would work. I would spend a month with Sarah while my parents watched my other son then I would spend a month with my son. Almost exactly a year later I could no longer afford keeping two households and Pepper was wanting to move back to her hometown which was in a different state but closer to where I lived so I gave up the apartment and she moved. The new situation continued for a couple more years. Pepper and I remained friendly and even tried to reconcile the relationship a couple of times, but it wouldn't work out. I was still deeply in love with her, but we couldn't come to an agreement on things like where to live and such. I forced myself to try and move on and started dating. She had been dating basically from the day after I moved out. Even though I still loved her our relationship moved more into good friends than husband and wife. So, she finally meets Steve. I never was told much about Steve other than he was a certified ethical hacker and that is what he did for employment, important later. While they were dating, she would send me texts about their dates. She even texted me the day they first had sex together. This hurt deeply and looking back I think this is what she wanted but I tried to play the part of good friend and confidant. Steve and Pepper had been dating for six months when out of the blue she tells me they broke up and she realized that she is madly in love with me. Since it's at the beginning of summer she packs some suitcases and heads to my state. They were going to spend the summer with me and see if they like it or not. We had an amazing summer. All the kids are getting along, drug even loved it here so she makes it official we are back together, and they are moving in. We went and registered my daughter for school, we even were able to get her on a peewee cheerleading team for the summer. She made several friends and was loving being here. There was only one problem Pepper still had an apartment that had all her furniture and stuff in it. I offered to go up with my truck and help load everything, but she insisted that her and drug can get it done. So off they go to pack up and then head to their new home. As you can guess things didn't go as planned. She was home for about three days when she informs me that under no circumstance will she move and that her and Steve are in love and are moving in with each other. To say I was destroyed was an understatement. I couldn't understand why she had done it. The worst part was she left it to me to tell Sarah the bad news. When I told her the devastated look on her face started turning my feelings of hurt into feelings of anger. Then Sarah broke down and started begging to stay with me and started spilling the beans. She told me things about how her mom would leave with Steve for days and leave Drug in charge. She had to learn how to cook for herself at eight because Drug would spend the money on well drugs and spend the whole time high. If Drug wasn't left in charge Pepper would use her multiple convicted felon niece to watch her. She also told me about the first time that she had met Steve. He came to their house basically said hello and him and her mom disappeared into the bedroom and started having loud sex. Sarah was outside the door bawling and they just ignored and continued. 
This is how my eight-year learned of sex and she is still in counseling trying to recover seven years later. At this point my anger has turned to rage. I immediately notified Pepper that there was no way Sarah was coming back and I would fight her to the death to keep her out of that situation. Pepper responded by getting an emergency hearing in her state to force Sarah back. I had to scramble but I managed to get a lawyer and easily won the hearing, which Pepper showed up late for and told the judge it was due to a disability. The judge agreed that since there was no custody agreement and with the troubling accusations that I had gathered it was best for now for Sarah to stay with me. I had won the first battle, but it was short-lived. Within an hour of the hearing, I started getting tons of phishing emails and texts, I was also getting password resets and MFA codes from my bank, Facebook, Reddit, and any other accounts. I knew that Steve was behind it. The very next day Jason calls. His law firm's website, email, and phone account had been hacked. Because he had to disclose the hack to the court and because he was working on a semi-high-profile case at the time the FBI got involved. To say I was enraged was an understatement these two people had destroyed me, harmed my daughter, and tarnished the reputation of my lifelong friend. It was time for them to pay and pay dearly. I was a man on a mission. I spent hours digging up as much dirt as I could on Stephen and Pepper. I had a lot of luck with Pepper. I found social media posts of her out late drinking that correlated to tardiness and missed days at school for Sarah. I found tons of pics of her and two strange kids doing fun activities. I found neighbors that were willing to testify that Sarah had to come beg for food because she was left with either drug or the felon. I knew I could bury her. Steve on the other had had all his accounts locked down. I couldn't find any dirt and it was driving me crazy. Then it hit me try LinkedIn. It paid off. There wasn't much posted but through his account I found Maria his ex-wife's account. I reached out to her and she happily accepted. Maria and I became fast friends. She hated Pepper, for good reason as they had both abandoned her kids like my daughter and didn't want her around her kids. I learned so much. To keep it short Maria and Steve had recently divorced. As part of the custody agreement Steve got the house, car, bank account, savings, and a lower than usual child support. Maria had traded all that money to have control of the kids. She knew he was a scumbag and all she was concerned about was keeping her kids safe. They had a very detailed custody agreement with rules for Steve to follow. As part of that agreement if Steve broke any rules, then he had to pay and pay dearly. He had to sell the house and give her half of everything. His child support would also double, and Steve would be financially ruined. Steve also didn't have her blocked on the social media and would regularly send texts bragging about how great his life was without her. Many of those texts had pictures of Pepper in them. We compared notes, we swapped evidence, we came up with a plan. And now it is time for revenge. First, I got with Jason, he let the FBI investigator know that I had also had some hacking attempts and we believed it was the same person. The investigator called quick. I gave him all the information I had and who I believed was doing it, and he asked a weird question. Do I know where Steve worked? Well yes, I did, thanks to Maria. So apparently Steve wasn't as good as a hacker as he thought himself to be. They had already traced back the hack on Jason to a business. The very same business Steve worked for. As soon as my conversation with the FBI was done, I called his work to lodge a complaint. I told the manager that someone was trying to hack me, and I was sure it was Steve. They of course did not take it too seriously because I had no proof. What they didn't know was they were soon going to be getting a visit from a special agent. The next week was absolute hell for Steve and Pepper. Pepper got served with the divorce papers and her lawyer got served with all the evidence I had gathered. My lawyer said it was the most complete investigation he had ever seen. I had all 40 tardiness and 19 absences tied to nights out drinking with Steve. I had hard proof of them abandoning my daughter for days at a time. Maria even gave me a picture that was taken at 2 a.m. the night before the emergency hearing with Steve and Pepper dinking in a tattoo parlor. 
The same hearing, she was late to and said it was due to a disability. Steve got served that he had violated the entire custody agreement. Maria had pictures from me proving he was with Pepper on nights the kids were with him, and they were left alone. She also had proof that there was contact with Pepper that violated the custody agreement. The fallout was awesome to watch. Steve was fired, between my complaint, another older complaint of him hacking, and the FBI showing up they had no choice but to fire him. He did avoid any legal issues as the FBI could never tie it directly to him. The word spread of why he was fired, and no one would hire him in an IT job again. He had to sell the house, liquidate all the investments, and bank accounts and give half to Maria. His child support got to stay the same since he no longer had a source of income. Last I heard he was working at a grocery store. So in total his income went from 200k plus a year to less than 40k. As for Pepper, the divorce was swift and painful for her. The judge ruled in my favor for all counts. I got sole custody and sole decision making. She was forced to go to counseling and her and drug can only visit Sarah with a third-party supervisor paid for by Pepper. Sarah is doing much better. She still needs counseling, but she thrives in school and has many friends. She very rarely sees her mom, but she is much better off without her.